Well, good morning. I hope everyone had a happy Thanksgiving and a delightful weekend. It's good to see you here as we come to worship our God and Savior, Jesus Christ. Um, this is a special day as it's the first Sunday in Advent. So we kick off, for lack of a better term, the Christmas season. Advent literally means to wait, coming, prepare. And we are preparing for the birth of the Savior, hence Christmas, his birthday. But then also the, um, the other theme of Advent, the second part that we tend not to always hear about is that this Advent is also preparation for the second coming of our Savior. As we say, Christ has died, Christ has risen, Christ will come again. So um, for those of you who like hearing the tuba and the, uh, some of the old polka songs, the umpapa, umpapa, that um, Advent is the umpapa season because you have the um, which is preparation for the first coming of Jesus, Christmas, and you have the papa, preparation for the second coming of Jesus, when he will return as victorious Lord of all. It's a beautiful time of the year. For me, it's still one of my absolute favorite times of, um, of the year, and I hope it is a good experience for you as well. So we are going to start with our choral introit, and then we will get right into our Stump the Pastor uh, Advent and Christmas hymn sing, and I will explain that in just a moment. Well, this is a tradition we have been doing uh, for some time called Stump the Pastor, uh, Christmas Hymn Sing. What we asked you of you for the last two Sundays was to submit uh, your entries, uh, favorite Christmas carols and Advent hymns, and we have recorded all those. Some of them have been duplicates, and all duplicates are entered in, so if it was mentioned three times, it went in all three times. What, uh, what we do is we sing two verses of each hymn. So you will see that we start off with uh, two selections. And we have our handy dandy trusty pickle jar uh, in which all those selections are, are here. And I will ask uh, two different people to put their hands in the jar, pick out a single selection. We'll sing two verses of each hymn. And then there will be a homily or mini message based uh, on what we have just sung. And we continue to progress through the service. It's proven to be just a, a lot of fun, a great experience, and so we're going to start things off here this uh, morning. Carolyn, if you would please. There we go. Okay, our first selection will be hymn 289, so 289. Trudy, would you pick our second one, please? And our second one is going to be 267. But let's start with him 289.
second verse. Shepherds, while there's jubilee, why your joyous strings prolong? What the gladsome tidings be, which inspire your heavenly song? turn to hymn 267, 267, and we'll sing verses 1 and 4. Joy to the world. hope this can be a, a joyful season for a lot of us. Um, I'm sure for some of you, you probably have every reason in the world to say, ah, Christmas, bah humbug. Uh, yeah, it's really my favorite time of the year, can't you tell? But it is uh, a time of, of joy. Uh, I didn't say happiness, but a time of joy. Joy can be, regardless of the circumstances that are going on in our lives, happiness is contingent upon what's happening around us. But joy is something else. It's something different because joy is that part which is connected to God. And knowing that God is present in, among, and around us. That even when, when life is, is just the pit, there can still be joy because of our relationship with the Lord and others. And so the angels uh, came, as we heard then, in Angels We Have Heard on High. Now, when we, when we think about the um, Christmas pageant, uh, which will be on the 19th this year, our children's Christmas pageant, and you have the critters, and you got the shepherds, uh, and the, the magi, the wise men, but of course, what's a Christmas pageant unless you have at least one angel, right? Angels are messengers of God. Angelos, like Los Angelos, Los Angeles, city of the angels, city of the messengers. Angels have a very prominent part in the Christmas story. In the Gospel of Luke, we see the angels visiting the shepherds. The shepherds are the first ones to receive the announcement that the Christ child is born. Now this is pretty significant because the shepherds were considered the bottom of the ladder. They were the, the quote, the lowlifes of society. They were poor, in fact, poverty. They smelled and stunk because they were out in the fields all the time, rarely took a bath. If you would have shepherds come into town, you would want to avoid them and go on the other side of the road uh, because they just stunk so much but also you just didn't want to be around them, really. And yet God chose this group to be the first recipients of the good news of the birth of the Savior. So the shepherds are, are there and uh, probably just a very routine life. Maybe they're just kind of telling stories to each other and they're bored out of their minds. 
and saying like nothing special really ever happens out here at nighttime. And yet we hear the statement from the Gospel of Luke. And this, of course, is uh, what Linus declares on stage uh, in the Charlie Brown Christmas special, one of my favorite scenes. And he recites what goes on and why we have Christmas. In the King James Version, he, um, Linus would say, and there are shepherds out on the fields, keeping watch over their flock by night. And an angel of the Lord appeared to them. The glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were afraid. And the angel said unto them, Fear not, for behold, I bring you good tidings of great joy, which shall be made known to all people. For to you is born this day in the city of David a Savior, which is Christ the Lord. And this will be a sign made known unto you. You will find the babe wrapped in swaddling clothes and lying in a manger. And suddenly, with the angel, there was a multitude of heavenly hosts praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest and peace to his people on earth. That's what Christmas is all about, Charlie Brown, as Linus would say. And it is. For to you and maybe you believe this and if you do then how do you take your faith deeper maybe you're wrestling and struggling with this and it's like you mean this is all about some little runt born in bethlehem 2000 years ago who then claimed to be god in the flesh yep and maybe you are a person who just like you got to be kidding me that sounds so far-fetched <laughs> yeah it does and we're invited to believe the unbelievable good news that God invites us to believe. That to you, for you, is born in the city of David, Bethlehem, a Savior who is the long-awaited Messiah, Christ and Lord. Mm. For our prayer of the day, let us pray. Lord God of heaven and earth, stir up your power and come. By your merciful protection, save us from the threatening dangers of our sins and enlighten our walk in the way of your salvation. For you live and reign with the Father and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. It is now time for Noah's Park Children's Church. Good morning. Good morning. The first reading is from Jeremiah 33, verses 14 through 16. The days are surely coming, says the Lord, when I will fulfill the promise I made to the house of Israel and the house of Judah. In those days and at that time, I will cause a righteous branch to spring up for David, and he shall execute justice and righteousness in the land. In those days, Judah will be saved and Jerusalem will live in safety. And this is the name by which it will be called. The Lord is our righteousness. Let us read responsively Psalm 25, 1 and 2, and 7 and 8. To you, O Lord, I lift up my soul. O my God, in you I trust. Do not let me be put to shame. Do not let my enemies exalt over me. Do not remember the sins of my youth or my transgressions. According to your steadfast love, remember me. For your goodness sake, O Lord. Good and upright is the Lord. Therefore, he instructs sinners in the way. The second lesson is from 1 Thessalonians 3, 12 through 13. And may the Lord make you increase and abound in love for one another and for all just as we abound in love for you. And may he so strengthen your hearts in holiness that you may be blameless before our God and Father at the coming of our Lord Jesus with all his saints. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Please stand. <laughs> 
The good news of the Holy Gospel for you, God's people, as it is written in the Gospel according to St. Luke, the 21st chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus says there will be signs in the sun, the moon, and the stars, and on the earth, distress among nations, confused by the roaring of the sea and the waves. People will faint from fear and foreboding of what is coming upon the world, for the powers of the heavens will be shaken. Then they will see the Son of Man coming in a cloud with power and great glory. And now when these things begin to take place, stand up and raise your heads because your redemption is drawing near. Then he told them a parable. Look at the fig tree and all the trees. As soon as they sprout leaves, you can see for yourselves and know that summer is already near. So also when you see these things taking place, you know that the kingdom of God is near. And truly I tell you, this generation will not pass away until all things have taken place. Heaven and earth will pass away, but my words will not pass away. Be on guard so that your hearts are not weighed down with dissipation and drunkenness in the worries of this life. And that day does not catch you unexpectedly like a trap. For it will come upon all who live on the face of the whole earth. Be alert at all times, praying that you may have the strength to escape all these things that will take place and to stand before the Son of Man. Word of God, word of life. Please be seated. A couple things I want to touch upon before we continue with our uh, Stump the Pastor Advent and Christmas carols. If you turn to page three, please, uh, you will notice that our midweek Advent services um, will begin this coming Wednesday. They're during uh, the four Wednesdays in the Advent season. We'll be meeting once again in the gathering area or gathering place. Um, at noon, and it's a misprint saying 7 there, it's 7.30, noon and 7.30. Uh, for the noon service and the 7.30 service, D is, is on the keyboard, uh, but we also have a special treat at midweek noon, and that is Warren Bowery, uh, who is a member of the congregation here. He will be on guitar and uh, also helping in leading of the singing, so that's going to be something new and different this time around as we um, enjoy the service called Holden Evening Prayer. And then on the back, in the middle of the bulletin, our congregation budget meeting will be two weeks from today, which is December the 12th. The choir Christmas cantata service, uh, which starts at 9.30. We have one service that day, 9.30. And then as we've done for the last number of years, our budget meeting will immediately follow that service. So please make note of that. Two very, very special things that we look forward to two weeks from today. Well, we continue our um, Advent and Christmas carols of Stump the Pastor. And so we are in the front section this time. So we'll now head towards the, the back section this time. And Joe, why don't you choose one for us? Okay, and that is going to be hymn 272, 272. And Tom, if you would choose the second one for us. Our second one's going to be 278. So our first one, 272.
78 to 78. beloved and familiar, though this melody uh, is not as familiar perhaps to most of us as what you see on page or hymn 277, the more familiar tune, but still away in a manger. Um, the manger, the, the child wrapped in swaddling clothes, laid in a manger, a feeding trough. I mean, most of us do not think of something like that for a crib uh, with our, our newborns. And yet uh, a feeding trough was the most handy dandy thing that was available uh, to uh, be in Bethlehem two years ago. Uh, most of what was used in these days to help uh, keep the uh, sheep uh, protected was caves. And this area is littered with caves. And so most likely uh, Christ was born in a cave where these animals were kept and sheltered against the elements and against the predators, and there would have been a feeding trough for these animals, a manger. What a humble birth that our Savior had. Now, in our, our first hymn that we sung, Lo, How a Rose Are Blooming, perhaps not as familiar to us, but when you look at uh, the, the words, like in verse one, Lo, How a Rose Are Blooming from Tender Stem Has Sprung, of Jesse's lineage coming as seers of old have sung. And then in verse two, Isaiah had foretold it. The rose I have in mind, with Mary we behold it, the virgin mother kind. The prophet Isaiah had foretold the coming of the Mashiach, the Messiah, the Christ. In this Old Testament prophet's beloved book, uh, Isaiah in chapter 35, we have these words. The desert and the parched land will be glad. The wilderness will rejoice and blossom like the rose. It will burst into bloom. It will rejoice greatly and shout for joy. This rose, this Christ, this long-awaited promised Messiah 
in the midst of the parchedness and desertness of our lives comes the one who is of good tidings of great joy. This is the root or the stump of Jesse, the lineage of David, the house and lineage of David that has come as the savior of the world. Think of some of your most favorite memories of Christmas. What comes to mind? More recent, perhaps um, if you're a parent, when your kids were young, or maybe it's when you yourselves were young, in which you could hardly, hardly fall asleep on Christmas Eve. If your family tradition was you had to wait till Christmas morning for the presents, then maybe that was probably one of the longest nights of the year for you, wondering what is going to be under the tree. It is a time of, of mystery, to say the least. Uh, my parents are here with us today, and one of the quirky memories that I have is um, in Steubenville, and I was probably six or seven years old, and the way that our house was built there was a, a roof line that was outside of one of my windows and uh, it had snowed. And when I woke up, it looked like there were, I kid you not, like runners of a sleigh that were on the roof. And I asked my father, how did you get out and do that? He says, I have no idea what you're talking about. And I showed him and said, look, Santa was here. I said, how did you do this, father? And he goes, I'll never tell. Maybe it was Santa after all. And to this day, he refuses to share with me just how this came about. It's one of the great mysteries of my universe, to say the least. But lo, how a rose air blooming. How even in the parchedness of life, there is still the gift of life that comes to us in the one who we call wonderful and counselor and mighty God and father of eternity and prince of peace, that rose that never dies, but is always blooming, Jesus, our Savior. Now, as we talk about mysteries of the universe, you will see that we're to have the Christmas creed on page four. Um, this is not in invisible ink. Uh, I kid you not. Uh, we just, uh, that's my bad. We just didn't get it printed. So let us turn to page 105 in the front of our hymnals and proclaim our resurrection faith in the words of the Apostles' Creed. I invite you to please stand at this time. Let's just take a little uh, leg stretch and proclaim our faith. Page 105. I believe in God the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Please be seated. And bear with me as I'm going to get a, a mini workout going up to the balcony. Balcony, we're going to have you part of this, and you're going to be able to select a hymn as well. Okay. Shelley, would you like to choose? Okay. M two nine seven two ninety seven. Ben. And that one, oh, we got a blank. Okay, well, <laughs> that, that is a mystery one, the wild card one. 
269 will be our second one. But our first one, hymn 297. Well, we've had some uh, uh, different tunes of familiar songs. We've also had some perhaps unfamiliar ones. Uh, it's been a long, long time since I've uh, sung that one. But don't feel bad because at the 8 o'clock, we, we had a number of them that were like, I didn't even know those were in the hymnal. <laughs> and they were practically unsingable. The words were great, but wow, they were some real tough ones to sing. So... No, that wasn't you, Jonathan? No. Oh, okay. Because some people were asking at the 8 o'clock service, and I said, yes, my son tends to be notorious to pick ones that we just typically don't. But no, no? Oh, really? Oh, okay. We got some people out here who have chosen some of the more obscure ones. All right, that's fine. Um, it, it is something to, to see some of these hymns that it's like, wow, that's, that's different. Um, when we look at once in royal David's city, King David. Now, the city of David was known as Jerusalem, but the city of David was also known as Bethlehem. 
And in the first hymn that we sang, Jesus, what a wonderful child. Jesus, 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 and what a wonderful child. The story of where Jesus gets his name is in the Gospel of Matthew. And it's when the angel visits Joseph in a dream. Matthew writes, this is how the birth of Jesus the Messiah came about. His mother Mary was pledged to be married to Joseph. But before they came together, she was found to be pregnant through the Holy Spirit. And Joseph was going to dismiss her quietly because here you have a lady who is engaged but not married. And in the ancient world, 2,000 years ago, to find a young woman, especially 12, 13, 14, which a lot of folks married at that age at that time, could easily then have been unmarried, could have been taken to the edge of town, and could have been stoned to death by the townsfolk. This is one of the great miracles of Christmas, that Mary made the decision to accept what God had proposed that she would be able to carry the Son of God for nine months, the Savior of the world. And she agreed to that. But with Joseph, after he considered this, an angel of the Lord appeared to him in a dream, said, Joseph, son of David, do not be afraid to take Mary home as your wife, because she is con- what is conceived in her is from the Holy Spirit. And so often we see throughout the Bible, do not be afraid, fear not. Easier said than done, I get that. But be strong and of good courage. Fear not, is what is told to Joseph. She will give birth to a son, and you are to give him the name Jesus. In Hebrew, it's pronounced Joshua. And in Spanish, Jesus. In others, it would be Yeshua. But Jesus. Because he will save his people from their sins. You may or may not know that the name Jesus literally means Savior. What's in your name? Now, I didn't say what's in your wallet, as the one uh, famous commercial is, but what is in your name? Do you know what your name means? There is power in not only knowing your name, but in what your name means. Perhaps you may even know why your folks gave you that name as well. But look it up later today. If you don't know what your name means, then look it up then. And how does that make a difference for you? For Jesus, it means Savior. But then in this same story, he's also given another name. And all this took place to fulfill what the Lord had said through the prophet Isaiah. The virgin will conceive and give birth to a son, and they will call him Emmanuel, which means God is with us. So in this short story, we see He is Jesus, Savior. He is Emmanuel, God in the flesh, God in a human body, God with us. Wow. Beautiful stuff. Hopefully significant and profound for you as we enter into this holy and sacred season. I invite you to please stand for our intercessory prayers and of the peace. Please stand. And let us pray. Lord Jesus Christ, during this sacred season of Advent, we prepare for your birth, the Christ of Christmas, and also for when you come again at the end of the age. You are wonderful, counselor, mighty God, father of eternity, prince of peace. We pray on behalf of those in our country and in our community and around your creation who are suffering. We also pray for Joan Custer, Ellen Hempel, John Goncalves, Leanne Hunt, Kenny Bridgman, Pat Leland, Max Schub, Mary Paxson. Lord, in your mercy. And to your hands, gracious God, we commend all for whom we pray, trusting in your mercy through Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. The peace of Christ be with you always. And also with you. Please remain you are standing, but extend the peace to those who are around you. God's peace. Boys, God's peace. God's peace, choir. Please be seated. A reminder that our offering boxes are at both exits 
And if you wish to give so electronically, you can do by, so by going to our church website, stmarkslutheranvw.com, or by texting 419-273-9947. Please stand. Let us pray together the prayer which our Lord has taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Now may the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord look upon you with favor and grant you his peace. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Please be seated. We have one final um, selection, one more Christmas carol or Advent song and choir. We're going to let you do the choosing. All right, make it a good one, Sharon. <laughs> Him two seven three. Two hundred and 73. What do we have here?
Okay, yeah, you, you tried your best, Sharon. You're not the one who, who said, you know, that would be a good hymn to, let's see if we can have a little redemption here. All right, let's try. 282. Okay. This is okay? All right. What do we have? Hymn 282. that last verse and, and Sharon thank you for you chose a really good one there that, that was good All right it was it was more familiar it was at least the other one was good too just this one was a little more familiar but in verse 4 as we sing on it came upon the midnight clear for lo the days are hastening by prophets seen of old when with the ever circling years shall come the time foretold you can't really understand the New Testament without understanding the Old Testament. If the New Testament is the building, the Old Testament is the foundation. If the New Testament is the tree, then the Old Testament is the roots. So the Old Testament is very, especially when it comes to the Christmas story, the Old Testament is so important for us in understanding what the arrival of Christ really does mean. The prophet Isaiah has so much when it comes to foretelling of the Old Testament. He's referred to again and again. In chapter 9, perhaps one of the most familiar passages for the Old Testament readings for Christmas, we hear these words. The people walking in darkness have seen a great light. And those living in the land of deep darkness a light has dawned. And what does Jesus say of himself in his ministry? I am the light of the world. And then Isaiah continues, For unto us a child is born, unto us a son is given, and the government will be upon his shoulders. And he will be called Wonderful, Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. Of the greatness of his government and peace, there will be no end. Empires come and empires go, but the empire or kingdom of God lasts forever. He will reign on David's throne and over his kingdom, establishing and upholding it with justice and righteousness from that time on and forever. The zeal of the Lord Almighty will accomplish this. So much is written and so much is stated in various interpretations uh, especially like the book of Revelation, the book of Daniel, the apocalyptic chapters in Mark, which is 13, and in Matthew chapters 24 and 25, as to how will things come to an end? Will be there a thousand year reign? Uh, is there um, 
you know, has Christ come before this, after this, and all those different type of details. And at least for me, I mean, we can, we can discuss and, and argue that, and it's important to, to look at that and examine that and see what it is that we think about that with the various understandings of the Bible. But I think the bottom line that is stated in the midst of all of it, and what the prophets try to help us see as well in the Old Testament, is that in whatever way Jesus comes, the point is, it is Jesus who comes. And he comes for you and for me. One of the great uh, stories from Martin Luther is this. There was a reporter who came to Luther and thought he would really get him all rattled up and, and uh, excited and saying, uh, you know, Reverend Luther, if you knew that Jesus were coming back tomorrow, what would you be doing today? And the reporter thought he'd be scurrying around or trying to get this or see these people or, or just like a chicken with his head cut off. And Luther just said, while he's holding a, 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 an apple tree in his hand, he goes, well, I guess I'll just go and still plant this apple tree in my backyard, which is what I was planning to do anyways. And what Luther's point was, regardless of, of how we interpret uh, the return of Jesus, the fact is, he's a child of God. He's sealed with the Holy Spirit, marked with the cross of Christ forever, as we are in our baptism. And we know that God has claimed us as his very own. And so whether there is years of tribulation or understanding or whether it's just the blink of an eye, however that unfolds, the point of the matter is, it's all about Jesus and the rest is details. And when God has claims, uh, claims us as his very own, what more could you want or ask for? And this is the good news that we hear this time of the year. Because Advent is not only preparing ourselves to celebrate the birth of the one who is and was and who is to come, the Alpha and the Omega, the A and the Z, the beginning and end of time, but Advent is also our preparation for his second arrival, his second coming, when he does come as victorious Lord of all of creation. And to acknowledge and know that this one comes to you out of love and great sacrifice in his life and his death and his resurrection. That is great news that we get to celebrate this time of the year. So if Christmas is a time for you to get all stressed out and you look at your schedule and you think about the people that might be coming over to your house and you, you got those certain relatives or you just aren't sure what you're gonna do or how you're gonna plan things, or maybe this time of the year just brings back a lot of very challenging and painful memories for you. We hear yet again and are reminded yet again that the reason we have this time of the year to begin with and to strip away all the commercialism and just getting to the point that two millennium ago, there was a young, scared couple who, because of the census of the Roman Empire, they traveled at great risk to go to the city of David, Bethlehem. And this young teenage girl then gave birth to her firstborn and wrapped him in swaddling clothes and laid him in a manger all this, she risked her life so that the Son of God would enter into the world who would then give up his life for you and for all of creation and yet was resurrected on the third day we call that Easter. And this because God is love. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, please stand for our doxology.
thank you everyone, have a great week.